Good morning. Today, Saturday, June 8th, uh, we're going to look at 2 Chronicles 32 and 33. Um, and then tomorrow morning we have worship live at 9 o'clock from Mabel in Sutton on Facebook. and uh, In person there as well, you're welcome to join us. And, and then at 10.30 tomorrow morning, I worship at our Saviors in McHenry. You're welcome to join us, as I said, in person at either place and live on Facebook at 9 o'clock uh, as well. Um, and then Monday we'll get back to the finishing up of this book of Second Chronicles by shortly into the week. But today we, in chapter 32, we see the, the final talking about King Hezekiah. And he's been a very faithful king. To, to God and to his people and other, you know, he's, he's built the kingdom of Judah, Jerusalem up quite a bit. And he's encouraged the other people of the northern kingdom to also become faithful to God. And, um, you know, chapter 32 begins with, after all of these things and these acts of faithfulness, King Sanishab of Assyria came and invaded Judah and he sets up a siege against Jerusalem. And he's sending, you know, his captains and his commanders and other people to speak ill of the God of Israel. And, you know, he's out there mocking the God of Israel in so many ways. And he's, how can your God, you know, stand against me who's, you know, my army has conquered, you know, gods of all kinds of gods and all kinds of peoples and you have no you have no hope you know and all of this braggart stuff you know from this king uh, of Assyria against God and uh, King <clears throat> King Hezekiah is is there and and he you know he says well you know they're out here sieging you know they're trying to you know, stop us. We're going to shut the water supply down and we're going to, you know, we're going to make it hard for them. And they do. And, and they've got a, you know, a conduit made of sorts that, you know, brings water into the city of Jerusalem so that when they are sieged, you know, they have this water supply that cannot be cut off by anyone else. But King Sanachab keeps deriding them and poking fun at them. And, um, you know, verse 18, they shouted with a loud voice in the language of Judah to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall to, to frighten and to terrify them. And you, know, you think about that, you know, here your city is under siege, you know, army, a huge army out there. And of course, I mean, why wouldn't you be filled with some fear and trepidation and wonder? And then to have people hurling insults and threats and everything else that way, um, you know, it, it can get kind of wearing. And uh, however, uh, you know, it says they spoke of the God of Jerusalem as if he were like the gods of other people, you know, which are the work of human hands. They didn't realize who the God of Israel is. And all of the speaking against them did no good. Verse 20 says, King Hezekiah and Isaiah, son of Amos, that's the prophet Isaiah who's whose book we have, and we'll, you know, when it tells us we're going to read more about Hezekiah in the book of Isaiah, um, when we get to that point. But the, the king and the prophet pray because of this. They cry out to heaven. Verse 21, the, an, the Lord sent an angel who cut off the mighty warriors and the commanders, and so he returned with disgrace to his land. You know, he had... You know, the, the angel of God, the army of God came and, and destroyed these people. And it says, when he came into the house of his God, some of his own sons then struck him down and killed him. He had fallen out of favor with everybody because of his mocking this God of Israel and his, you know, total lack of any kind of success against this God, this God of Israel. And and so then uh, King uh, Sanashab of Israel is, is gone. Um, and, and again, it says that God gives the people of Jerusalem, of Judah, uh, a rest again. And so they, they live in peace and harmony and, and living in God's favor. Um, but then verse 24, there's a little catch in the thing. You know, King Hezek uh, Hezekiah becomes sick on the point of death. He prays to the Lord. And the Lord heals him. 
But then we find, you know, a little, a little bit more, you know, it says that King Hezekiah uh, became very proud, you know, and, you know, pride goeth before a fall. That's the saying we've heard, you know, many different times. That, and when he becomes proud and, and kind of falls out of favor with God a little bit, realizes it, comes back to himself and prays again to God. And, you know, it says he humbles himself for the pride of his heart. You know, he says, you know, God, I know that it wasn't me. And this is a prayer that each of us n needs to remember, you know, that when, when things are going well, it's not just about me, but to give thanks to God and to give thanks to those that are around us. And, you know, it's, you know, it's, I pulled myself up by my bootstraps stuff, you know, and, and yeah, granted we do, we have to work hard. We do those things, but, but yet, uh, to fill ourselves with pride is, is not very, you know, it's not a recommended trait anyway. Um, the rest of this chapter, Hezekiah had very great riches and honor, made himself great treasuries. He provided the cities for himself and he provided well for the people. And, and this is what a king does. This is what a ruler does. He always makes sure that his subjects have food and water, the amenities that they need, that they have a, um, a, a peaceful area to live and to, to be. And, you know, and this is, we're so fortunate, I think, in the United States that, you know, there are riots, there are trouble-torn world places, and there's a lot of crap that goes on. I'm not saying that at all. But yet, we live uh, very, very safe lives. You know, we don't have to worry about a lot of things. I think about, you know, Israel, I think about the Ukraine, I think about so many places in the world that people are persecuted for their faith. They're not able to, to live as they would want to. And this is what King Hezekiah was making available for the people of Judah. Because of his faithfulness with God, because of his care for the people, because of his, you know, wanting good for others. And it, it's not, you know, he learned it wasn't all about him. It wasn't all about his pride, but it was in, in caring for others. Um, so at the end of chapter 32, Hezekiah dies. His son Manasseh begins to reign at 12 years old. And, and it says he does what is evil in the sight of the Lord. He builds up the Assyrian poles, the idols, the temples, the worship of God, Baal, and, and uh, just goes the opposite direction of his dad, you know, a, a rebellious of some sorts. And, you know, it says he made his son pass through the fire of the valley, practicing soothsaying and augury and sorcery and dealt with mediums and wizards. And, you know, he was seeking help in all the wrong places instead of seeking God. It says he did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. He had even put a, a carved image of the idol in the house of God, which David had made in the temple, you know, the sacred temple of God. He put a, uh, a statue. Verse 10, a change. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they gave no heed. Therefore, the Lord brought against them the commanders of an army of Assyria who took Manasseh, the king, captive, put a ring in his nose, bound him up as a slave, and took him, took him away. And, but then, while he was in great distress, he entreated the favor of God. He prayed to God. He, he said, you know, Lord God, I messed up. I mean, he, he comes to it. He confesses and he asks God's blessing. God hears the plea and Manasseh is returned to Jerusalem, to his kingdom, and, and reigns um, correctly and favorably to God. And then Manasseh passes away and his son Ammon uh, begins to become king when he's 22 years old and, and again, um, does evil in the sight of the Lord. And it's it just, it, it's this vicious cycle again of um, evil sin, you know, sin rearing up its head in the world. And, and just a reminder that um, we all need to be wary. We need to be on guard all of the time for what is happening in the world. Uh, but this this king Ammon does not uh, <coughs> figure out that he needs to pray to God and follow God. He just he just doesn't figure that out, and um, you know it just you know he he doesn't rule very long 
and you know, probably very fortunate for the people that he doesn't rule very long. But, but yet it's just, it's that constant reminder for us to be on guard and to know that, you know, um, Satan will do anything to break us. He tries so hard to break us with, with many different things in life. And it's, you know, we learned from Hezekiah that, you know, when, you know, he got proud and he realized it and he came back to God. It's never, never, ever too late to turn back to God. This is, this is one of the best promises that we ever have. It's never too late to come back to God.